Okay, so in this section, I want to walk you through how to construct convolutional layers in TensorFlow and Keras. And once we're able to do that, we'll be able to build convolutional neural networks. Now, all the um, demos for this are in the GitHub site, and the links can be found in the links below. You can clone that whole GitHub repository as usual and run that demo on your local machine. But I'm, as usual, going to run it on the collab.research.google.com page. So head over to there, select file and open, and as usual, click on the GitHub tab. Enter my GitHub page, HTTPS, github.com as the Rungan, select the repository intro ML for this class, and go all the way down to unit 10, and then it is the first demo on convolutions. So after you select that, the demo will download, and it's in the collab page. The first thing we need to do is download the images. If you're running this on your local machine, from the repository, you can skip this step because this image that I'm going to use is already in the repository. But if we're running it in Colab, we need to bring it into the virtual machine. So I created this simple file program, download file for this purpose. Uh, I don't want to bother going into how it was written. It just downloads a machine uh, a file from a um, source URL onto the local machine. So here it is, it's been downloaded. You could also directly copy it if you like, looking at this files tab on the uh, collab page, and there you see it. Okay, uh, let's look at the images we're going to uh, work with. You've actually already seen one of them in the earlier units. I'm gonna show you how they were loaded and processed in Python. So we download a few standard packages, including an image processing package called SK image. All right, I've created a routine for displaying both black and white and color images. Uh, I'll load that up. And let's take a look at our first image. The first image is actually directly one of the standard data set images in the SK image package. It's very widely used in a lot of image processing uh, research, so that's why it's included in this package. So it's very simple to download. You just literally call it with this one command. And if we display it, we get our famous cameraman image. And uh, this is interesting to look at because it has a lot of sharp edges. If we take a look at the shape of this, it's a 512 by 512 image, so it's square. And it's a, of course, higher resolution than, say, MNIST that we were looking at earlier. All right, for the color image, this is the one I just downloaded. It's in the still life. So to download it into Python, we can use this SK image IOM read function. And then when you call that and display it, what you bring in is a three, in this case, it's a 368 by 487 size image. It's a little wider than it is tall. And it has three channels, R, G, and B, and that's why we can get these beautiful colors here for this image. Okay, so in the earlier section, I actually went through how to perform convolutions in 2D using the SciPy and NumPy functions. And that, you can look at all the code in this section here on performing 2D convolutions. Now, I don't want to spend time here, so I'm just going to pause the video and run these commands so I load up some filters, and then we'll continue on. So after you run those commands, scroll down to the section on implementing convolutional layers in Keras. Now, I'm going to start with showing how to implement that on the black and white camera image. Now, one thing about convolutional layers is that they always process images in batches and convolutional layers in TensorFlow. So we have to create an image batch and a batch is a multiple set of images.
and that is typically represented as a tensor with the number of images times the number of rows times the number of columns times the number of input channels. So I'm going to create that image, that tensor, and then reshape our image into this. In this case, this will just be a batch of a single image. So if I run this and print the shape of that image, we get this um, shape here. There's a single image. That's what the one is there. It's 512 by 512, and it has one channel, and it's one channel because it's black and white. Okay. Next, we need to do is download some uh, layers and other methods in classes in TensorFlow, including this Conf2D class layer that we'll be using. And let's go ahead and start creating a network for this convolutional 2D. So what we're going to do, so let me run that. Uh, we're going to first clear the TensorFlow session to clear out any other graphs that I've created. We're going to create a sequential model, and then we're going to add one layer. And that layer, just to make, just to illustrate a layer, I'm going to uh, create a layer representing the gradient filters. So the size of the gradient filter, this is the GX in the, the horizontal direction, but I'll actually put in two filters, one for the X and Y, so there'll be two outputs. And then when I create the convolutional layer, I give it the input shape, and then I give it the number of channels in the output, which is two, I give it the kernel size, and I give it a name. So let's run that. And if we print a summary of this, summary doesn't show the input shape, but it shows the output shape of our Conv2D layer. The none again represents the fact that the number of samples, and it's not specified because we can give the convolutional neural network, an arbitrary number of samples in each run. The output shape is 510 by 510. The original shape of the input was 512 by 512. Again, it's a little smaller here because uh, we're using the valid mode, so we lose some pixels at the edge. And there are two outputs because we're going to have the X and the Y gradients. That's about 20 parameters in total. Okay. Um, if we wanted to get the weights and biases, so these are initialized with some random weights and biases. I can use this and go get this layer, get my convolutional layer, and get its weights and biases. And if we print its shape, we see here that the weights are 3 by 3 because that's the size of the kernel. There's one input channel, because it's a black and white image, and there are two output channels. And the output has uh, also has two biases, one for each channel. So I'm going to replace these, um, these weights that were initialized with the gradient filters. To do that, I just um, run this command, and I'm going to set the weights in for the first input and first output, the gradient in the x direction, and then the first input and the second output for the y direction. And I'm going to zero out the biases and set those weights. So now we have a convolutional lay layer with the gradient filters. All right, now to run our image through this, I'm just going to reshape our image into the tensor format and then run it through the model with the predict function. And now I have Y. Okay, let's take a look at the output shape of Y. And you did see there's one um, output because there's one input, one input image, 510 by 510, and we get the two outputs. All right, so let's take a look at the outputs for the two channels. I can grab that by looking at the first and second output channel, and then I can plot it along with plotting the original image. And here we go. Here's the original input image. Right, and we see the two output channels. And as we expect, we would get higher values at the sharp gradients, this one for the gradients in the x direction, which have corresponded to strong vertical lines like the edge of the jacket on the left and right. And this one is gradients in the vertical direction. So these would be horizontal lines like this part of the jacket here, and you get a strong value. All right, so that's how we implement a uh, tensor, a convolutional layer. Let's look at multiple input and multiple output channels 
when we have a um, uh, with a color image. So again, this part here, I'm going to just display our still life image here. And if we look at that image's um, shape here, let's just print. Uh, oh, the image, the original image shape is here, 368 by 487, as I said, because it's a little wider than it is um, tall, and it has three channels on the input for red, green, and blue. Now, if I want to, um, again, input this into TensorFlow, I have to create a batch of images. So I'm just going to create a batch with a single image and then reshape this image into that shape. So the batch shape here is 1 by 368 by 487 by 3. Okay, now I'm going to do this is I'm going to create a network with four output channels and these will be sensitive to different colors. So to do this, I'm going to specify some kernel size, it's 9 by 9, and four output channels. And I'm going to go ahead and create a network again with our convolutional 2D. And then when I run it, you can see the output shape. There's a none specifying the variable number of images. And the output shape, again, a little smaller than the input because we lose some pixels due to boundary conditions in valid mode. And there are four output channels. And I'm going to show you what four output channels I'm going to pick. Okay. Um, if we get the weights for this, again, we get 9 by 9 for the kernels because they're 9 by 9 each filter, and there are three input channels, RGB, and there are four output channels. Now, what I want, and again, there are four biases, so let's just print that. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to create um, uh, filters that are sensitive to different colors. Now remember that the weights are kind of indexed by these four variables. You can think of the first two variables here as the variables over the spatial domain. This third variable i is on the input and the uh, channel, which would be the color sensitivity, and j would be the output. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, for the gab, I'm going to put a Gaussian kernel. So we'll just kind of take a local average. And for the color weight, what this um, matrix here represents is for each output channel, I'm going to pick it meaning sensitive to a different color. So in this case, remember it's R, G, and B. So it's a 1 on the R channel and minus 0.5 and minus 0.5 on the G and B. So it's high value to R and has negative values to green and blue. Similarly, this channel here will be sensitive to green, and this channel will be sensitive to blue, and this channel will be sensitive to a red-blue mix. So then I can just create that um, Gaussian kernel, and then create the weights by performing this matrix multiplication, which here I can go ahead and do in with Python broadcasting, and then set those weights. So that was a little confusing, perhaps, to explain. Let's just visualize those weights. So what I went through here is I just went through each of the input channels and printed the uh, weight, and we see what we're physically getting here. So in the first output channel, I'm building a filter that's sensitive to red, another that's sensitive to green, to blue, and then the red-green uh, mix, which is, so the red-blue mix, which is like a purple color. Okay, so now let's walk through or run our image through these uh, channels and see what we get. So again, we just take our batch of images, our batch of one image, run it through the predict and look at the outputs with this command here, and we get our outputs here. So if we go back and take a look at this, let's take a look at the image. The image has two green apples, a orange, and then a kind of dark purple apple like this. And you see here, for the red channel, it produces a high value on that orange because there's a lot of red. So it's kind of picking out where in the image there's a lot of red. The next channel, it corresponds to the green. It's picking out where in the image there's green. In that case here, those are the two green apples in the back. There's a lot of blue actually around in the background and also a little bit on that uh, purplish apple to the right. And this purple uh, color here picks up that purple apple 
as well as the orange because the orange happens to have a lot of purple in it as well. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of an illustration of um, what physically these uh, kernels do and how to construct them and play around with them in TensorFlow. I want you to try this little simple exercise here, which is just to try to create horizontal gradient filters, but in different colors and repeat this and see the kind of uh, results you get.